think that we can start. It is a great pleasure to introduce you, Professor Miguel Brun. is one of the professors in this university in strength of materials. His research is in microstructure and continua. He has done very interesting papers. He's a leader of a small but very strong group. And I think uh, we'll start soon. Uh, Let's hope. Long collaboration. So please, go ahead. Okay, thank you. First of all, uh, let me thank the organizer, Marco, and especially Francesco, for the kind invitation, for the level of presentation that, at least up to now, was quite remarkable, and uh, for all the organizing team because they make a very, really nice environment here in Cagliari. Uh, so today I will uh, focus on uh, gyroelastic microstructure media and the focus is on uh, non-reciprocity, non-reciprocal effect. Why it is important, uh, this non-reciprocity? Because the target uh, is to be able to redirect energy in some direction. The target is uh, to protect some part of the structure or to accumulate, to store energy uh, in other part of the structure or to redirect wave in order to be able to adapt the signal, moving them in different direction or in different time. Uh, what are microstructural media? The simplest uh, microstructural media is uh, a lattice. Here we have uh, an example. Okay, and how we obtain uh, the gyroscopic effect? Simply, we put the lattice on a system of spinners. Here we have this big experimental tool. Okay, what is the effect of a spinner? If the top moves in one direction, you obtain a reaction force in an orthogonal direction. And uh, this is a local force. We started to work uh, on this subject uh, nowadays more than 10 years ago in this paper and we did a, an application uh, here where we have uh, uh, an approximate cloaking system. Then we, started, uh, we studied more deeply uh, the, the uh, dynamic behavior. We were able to characterize the wave polarization and the tunability of uh, dynamic isotropy. So the capability to redirect wave along well-defined direction. Uh, then I went to US, I gave a seminar, and uh, the group of Katia Bertoldi, and then with a slightly different uh, model, uh, they took this inspiration to obtain uh, a system that uh, can give a topologically protected wave. So wave that are localized, and uh, they move, uh, in this case, only in one direction, we will see better later, and are able to pass uh, defects uh, without being perturbed and without leakage of energy into the bulk. Uh, this concept was uh, further developed by a group uh, in uh, Liverpool, uh, in which there is Mike Neves and especially Giorgio Carta, who is here. And uh, they show different systems in which they were able to localize the energy along well-defined pattern. So if you think in this way, if you put a stone in a lake, the wave spread in all direction. In this system, if you have a load here, the wave is highly localized and move only in one direction. Then you can tune this direction or you can create close contour and create what they call the DESA, dynamic amplification spinners in an elastic reticulated system, which is able to store all the energy in a closed path. Uh, in the following, uh, we revised the theory that was uh, uh, not completed in this paper with uh, Giorgio, Mike Nils, and Marta Garau. And uh, we revised all the theory starting from the transient regime. Just to understand uh, very briefly, uh, no, sorry, before a small note, uh, we discovered that uh, what is constant during this motion is this quantity which is called gericity that when the nutation angle is sufficiently small, is the sum of the spin rate, the rate of rotation of the spinner, and of the precession rate. This can be imposed by an external load or by initial condition and remain constant during the motion. 
Uh, let's look at uh, uh, this example. We will see uh, other example in the following. This is a simple lattice in which uh, we have uh, a B mass unit cell, which is characterized by geometry of opposite sign. And uh, if we build the equation of motion, the linear momentum balance for this system in normalized form, we have the usual, these are vector equation for the node A and B, the usual inertial terms, the elastic term, the interaction between one node and uh, the neighboring node in terms of non-inertial elastic link, and the effect of the spinner, the Girishti effect, which is expressed in terms of this rotation matrix that couples uh, displacement along the two direction. So it gives exactly this effect. If at the top I have a displacement in one direction, the system reacts uh, with the force in an orthogonal direction. We could obtain uh, uh, this type of result. These are dispersion surfaces. Yesterday already Giorgio Carta explained uh, more or less uh, these uh, concepts. And at a certain frequency, the slowness contour are simply lines. This means that uh, at this frequency, wave can propagate only along the orthogonal direction, which is constant for this line. We perform uh, uh, numerical analysis in the transient regime. We have here an example. We have a, a vibrating force here, and you see that the wave propagates a longer well-defined pattern in a localized form. Okay, does not uh, spread uh, in the whole bulk, but it remains localized and it propagates only in one direction. I will go a little bit faster on this computation, which are not the core of the talk. Okay, then uh, we look at a different effect. This is a slightly different uh, uh, lattice. It's an hexagonal lattice. Uh, in the absence uh, of uh, any gericity, it creates uh, this degeneracy uh, with uh, the so-called Dirac-Cons, where two uh, internal vibration modes intersect. When uh, we introduce the effect of gericity, this dirac opens, you create a small band gap, and the two internal modes split, one on the upper surface and one on the lower one. A physicist characterize this effect as a quantum all effect. There is a topological number, the chair number, that characterizes and describes the Berry curvature of the surfaces for these cases. I'm not going into this for the moment. But what you can obtain, you can obtain against topologically protected wave, so wave that propagate along uh, lines uh, does not spread into the bulk, uh, and uh, in addition to what Giorgio showed yesterday, due to the fact that we are breaking time reversal, it prop they propagate only in one direction. Uh, this is a, a transient simulation at a certain frequency with a force applied here. Here we have the same lattices, but uh, with opposite geometry. And we see that here the wave propagates along the interface. Uh, which is a defect, there is no leakage into the bulk and uh, continue to propagate along the interface between uh, the two hard space media. We can obtain propagation also in the other direction by slightly changing the frequency of the force. And in this case, it propagates up, reaches the corner, passes the corner when he has accumulated enough energy, and then continue without leakage into the bulk. Okay, let's go now in the two main topics of uh, this talk. Uh, in order to exploit better non-reciprocity, we look at the Rayleigh waves, waves that propagate along a boundary of a semi-infinite space. Just a small note, if you look in the book and you look for Rayleigh wave for a classical linear elastic isotopic material, you find the characteristic equation, which is a cubic equation 
uh, in CR square. CR is the velocity of Rayleigh wave, which is given as a function of velocity of shear and pressure waves, or dilatational waves. But you don't find the solution. So this is a cubic uh, uh, algebraic uh, equation. So in this paper uh, of some years ago, we put the explicit solution. And then we found in another form in a paper by Barber. So this is the explicit form, which depends on the Poisson ratio. And uh, uh, n and the f1 are a function of the Poisson ratio. This is a small note. Uh, how we build the solution for this type of structure? We solve uh, uh, two eigenvalue problems. So we build the solution in the bulk. Uh, we consider a triangular system with constant juricity. So again, in the time harmonic regime, where time derivatives are obtained by simply multiply by i omega. Omega is the radian frequency. Our equation, uh, we have the usual inertial term the elastic interaction between neighboring nodes, and again, the effect of juricity in terms of this rotation matrices, matrix that couple the displacement in the two directions. Uh, by imposing block floquet condition, here are given in two forms. These are uh, the solution propagating in the direction tangential to the boundary, and this is in the direction orthogonal to the boundary. We know that we want decaying uh, waves, so we use this uh, notation. But it's essentially the same as this. We solve, uh, putting this into the governing equation, we solve this uh, eigenvalue problem. We find uh, this parameter and the eigenvectors. So we have the solution. This solution then is inserted in the discretized form of boundary condition, which can, this can be seen, can be written in different way, but can be seen as uh, the zero traction for condition for this discrete system. This is the boundary, and this is a semi-infinite space. By inserting the previous solution, we arrive at the second eigenvalue problem, and we solve, and we find the relation between the frequency of the Rayleigh wave and the wave number for propagation along the tangential direction. The, we were able to obtain this in a full explicit form, and this embeds also the effect of juricity here. When the juricity goes to zero, we obtain the well-known formula uh, for Rayleigh wave in an elastic lattice, which is given here. So for the moment, we have no, nothing that uh, tells us that uh, the system is non-reciprocal. If we look at the dispersion properties, they are symmetric, no uh, information by non reciprocity. But uh, immediately we see some interesting effect. This is the non reciprocal system. And this uh, is uh, the asymptotic approximation for long wavelength, the small wave number, and uh, uh, low frequency approximation, classical homogenization. We take also the second term, but uh, okay, this is for gradient theory but it's not so important. But we see that in absence of juricity, the leading order term gives rise to a non-dispersive system. Okay, the relation between frequency and wave number is linear. As far as we introduce even a small juricity, this is a denominator, the relation became dispersive immediately. It's like a beam. So we have dispersion also the origin in the, let's say, quasi-static, in the low frequency, long wavelength homogenized uh, uh, framework. But again, the system is symmetric. Uh, we wanted also to compare with an homogenized medium, classical elasticity. These are lame moduli, linear, isotropic, the inertial term, and the gyroscopic term. Uh, we solve uh, in the bulk this problem with the classical Helmholtz decomposition in terms of uh, pressure and uh, uh, deviatoric potential, and we obtain uh, these two uh, equations. If we cancel the effect of juricity, we have this decoupled equation, which are classical, uh, but the introduction of juricity couple the two equations. We solve this, so we found the eigen solution, and then we impose the zero traction boundary condition on the boundary of this semi-infinite space. And again, uh, when we solve this, uh, we obtain uh, the characteristic equation uh, and the dispersion relation that relates for the continuum model the frequency omega rc as a function of the wave number for propagation along the tangential direction on the boundary. Again, uh, we have uh, the effect of juricity. 
We compare with the discrete model, and we see that in the long wavelength, there is a perfect, good match, and then uh, the microstructure starts to play a role. So the waves start to fill the microstructure, and the two curves uh, for the continuum, the dashed line, and for the discrete, the continuous line, they separate. Here we have the Bragg effect at the boundary of the first reduced Williams. But again, this system is symmetric. So it seems to be reciprocal. But if we look at the forced solution, which is done here, we apply in the discrete system a force on the boundary, we see that the propagation on the boundary is not symmetric. So what is going to happen? It's not the eigenfrequency that are not symmetric, but are the eigenmodes in this case. Uh, here we look at the trajectories of single points or single masses. And uh, uh, we plot here as a function of the wave number, the ratio between the, uh, the semi-axis of the trajectory of single points on the boundaries. And we see that when the geodesicity is zero, there is full symmetry. The trajectory is always ellipsoidal. But when we introduce the effect of geodesicity, the two trajectories split apart. And they are different when wave propagate to the right or to the left. There is also a good match between continuum and lattice in terms of these trajectories, uh, which are the same only when K1 goes to zero. So in this case, the source of non-reciprocity has to be looked by looking at the internal mode of vibrations. Uh, we were not happy enough, so we wanted to demonstrate theoretically this lack of non-reciprocity. And uh, so we return back to our well-known Betty-Maxwell theorem. Uh, in electromagnetism, they call the Onsaga reciprocity relation, but it was done 50 years later. No? Uh, in dynamics, especially in time harmonic dynamics, uh, this has to be expanded. This was done by Graphy in the 50s of the last century. So we cannot compute uh, a simple uh, product, uh, a scalar product, but we have to compute uh, a convolution between the two elastic states, uh, U1 and U2. Here we consider a system without body forces, uh, and the volume of the domain is V, and the frontier, the boundary is S, and uh, we consider two elastic states, uh, and we compute the difference between the traction in the first and the displacement, always in terms of convolution, of the second minus the traction in the second and the displacement in the first. This difference should be zero for a reciprocal system, but in our case, we sum, and we have twice this effect, which is induced by geodesicity. So, the system is non-reciprocal. And this uh, is a demonstration that gives us the possibility to try to find applications in which we can redirect energy only in some directions. Uh, we wanted to give a numerical proof. Uh, sorry for this point. I don't know where they come from. So, a very simple computation, semi-infinite lattice, two forces, and we compute the mutual work uh, uh, by looking at the work done by the force in A uh, due to this displacement in A uh, generated by the force applied in B and the, the, the reciprocal effect. This is the time distribution of the two forces uh, and these are the two mutual displacement. If the system is non reciprocal, they are exactly the same, but when we insert the effect of geodesicity, the two curves split and we have this difference between these two curves. Okay, again, a demonstration of non-reciprocity. Uh, we characterized uh, even better this effect by looking at the semi-infinite lattice uh, subjected to a vibrating load in this node, and we computed the energy fluxes along this boundary. In particular, we discriminate uh, between boundary on the right, uh, the omega one and the omega two, and on the left, the omega-3 and the omega-4. And here we plot uh, the energy fluxes uh, as a function of frequency. These crosses uh, are the energy flux along the full boundary normalized by the energy input due to the load. The circular uh, dots are the energy fluxes 
to the right, the omega 1 and the omega 2, normalized always, and the square dot is the energy flux on the left. And we see that this, first we see that there is energy balance. This is important because we show in this way that the wave does not extract or give energy to the spinners. Okay? So this is an active but not so active system, in the sense that we put the system with a certain level of energy, and then there is no energy exchange between spinners and the propagating wave. Okay, so we leave the system like that at a certain level of energy, and then we use to uh, govern wave propagation. It's not like an active system that feeds the wave and then reacts, changing itself. The system has a certain level of energy and is always the same. Uh, and then uh, we see that there is a, a difference between energy flux to the right and to the left, with uh, this point which is equal. Again, this is a demonstration uh, of the fact that we can redirect energy in one direction more than the other. Uh, we wanted to exploit a little bit better this concept by searching for some uh, application, and we found this application that I found quite interesting. We have, uh, sorry for this, I did it, and it's too long, but right, I'm not good in doing these things. We have this waveguide, which is a lattice, and a non gyroscopic lattice. So we impose uh, a load, the wave propagates, but if the lattice is not gyroscopic, gyroscopic it teach uh, cross, uh, the energy is split uh, in the same way in the two directions. If now we introduce the effect of geodicity, of opposite sign, we see that we can guide uh, along the crosses the energy propagation. So the energy will propagate only along branches with the same geodicity. In this case, you decide to go to the left and then against to the left. So we can choose the port, the gate, where we want to direct our elastic energy. We want to choose another port. It's simply we change geodicity. Okay, so now we want to choose the gate C. So here the wave turns to the right and here to the left. Uh, the leakage is below 3% at each cross. Eh? So very, most of the energy is redirected as we want. Okay, let's pass to the final system. We are in a nonlinear conference, so I wanted to show some nonlinear effect. In this case, uh, we consider a very simple lattice, nonlinear lattice made of masses and nonlinear springs. These nonlinear springs can be considered like uh, cables. Uh, which are slightly contracted in their initial configuration. So they are not like that. In the initial configuration, are like that. So in order to activate uh, the cables, we have to apply a certain displacement. Uh, this is an approximation for the stiffness of the cable, which depends on the elongation and uh, on this initial contraction. This is the plot. Uh, and this, uh, by integrating this, we obtain the force displacement uh, relation for a single cable. We also went uh, to the lab uh, and we did some experiment. Uh, this is with a fishing, braided fishing line that you use when you go to, to fish. Very stiff uh, and we see a very good correlation with the experimental result. Uh, in the implementation, uh, we are in this regime. So we don't go in the final part where we have a loss uh, uh, softening effect and the breakage of the wires. So it's not really connected with non-reciprocity, but we enjoy uh, exploiting the wave propagating into the system and in try to find an analytical solution for this uh, solitary, which is also solitonic waves. Again, we have the linear balance equation uh, for a single mass, uh, which is simply obtained by integrating the previous relations is a nonlinear uh, relation. Uh, and then we solve this system for a lattice through a MATLAB algorithm and in console here in red. So we have a semi-infinite lattice. We apply to the first node this imposed displacement. And what we see, we see that there is a wave 
these are the displacement profile for all the nodes. The displacement is longitudinal. I will show in the transfer direction only for visualization purposes. But we have a, a wave with uh, constant uh, uh, amplitude that propagates with constant velocity. Here is the result. Always it starts uh, not at the beginning. Uh, again, these are longitudinal displacement, but this is the wave that propagates to the nonlinear lattice. So we wanted to find uh, an analytical solution or an analytical approximation for this type of wave. Uh, first of all, uh, this is a tension only system. So in this system, wave propagate only in one direction. So if we compare the wave propagating in a classical linear lattice, we see that uh, if we impose a displacement here, wave propagate in both directions in a classical linear lattice. While in a nonlinear lattice, uh, due to the dis displacement, only a tensile wave propagate in this direction. Okay, so we have one way, solitary waves that propagates only in one direction. In order to find analytic, an analytical approximation, this is a wave that propagates with constant velocity c. So we introduce a moving coordinates. We express the balance of linear momentum uh, in terms of these moving coordinates, and we find uh, as a possible solution a solution of this type that uh, we have proposed in the paper that we show at the end, in which uh, uh, the four constant has to be found uh, case by case, and we will see that uh, the wave that propagates depends on the velocity c. So this four constant uh, has been found with hi, I call hi human intelligence, and uh, by imposing four conditions, uh, conditions before the wave is arrived, the maximum amplitude condition, maximum velocity, and maximum acceleration. We have four conditions. And then it's very easy to find the four constant. This is directly gives D1. This is a linear system in D3 and D4. And then uh, we have uh, a transcendental equation in D2, which is monotonically increasing. So it has a single solution. So the last has to be found numerically, but it can be easily found. We also gave a PADE approximation for these uh, uh, coefficients in terms of uh, they depend on the velocity c, and uh, uh, here we have the value of these uh, eight coefficients. Yes, eight. And this is the comparison between the numerical solution for continuous line and the PADE approximation for the coefficients for the dashed lines. It seems to be very good. More importantly, this is uh, the solution in terms of amplitude of the propagating wave and velocity, maximum velocity of a propagating wave as a function of the key parameter, the velocity of propagation of the solitonic waves. It starts uh, not in zero here because we have to activate the effect. And uh, importantly, this is a monotonical increasing function. So if we know the velocity, we, know, we fully know the propagating wave. Uh, okay, then uh, this was the idea that we had. We considered two nonlinear springs. Uh, they intersect at the central point, and in the central point, we put uh, a single spinner. And we see the effect that gives this spinner. Sorry. We solve uh, this system numerically, in particular. For the central node, we have uh, the uh, two displacement in the horizontal and, uh, let's say, transverse direction and the effect of the spinner here. And we perform some transient formulation. We have an incident wave coming from the left branch. Here, L means left, right, top, and bottom. It reaches the central node, activates the spinner, and then we have transmitted, reflected, and wave which are deviated only to the right. Not, no wave propagates and are turned to the left. Let's see some numerical simulations. So the waves arrived, it activates 
now the spinners and we see the wave only which is redirected only to the right and not to the left. We wanted to quantify this effect better by looking at the energy fluxes. Uh, here, these are the energy fluxes to the right branches, branch, to the bottom one, to the top one. This is the reflected one. And uh, this is the kinetic energy of the central node. And this is the propagating energy normalized by the incident energy. Uh, first of all, uh, this is equal to 1. Again, this means that uh, there is no energy exchange between the wave and uh, the spinner. Uh, no energy flows in the top branch, so it's not redirected to the left. And then uh, we can distinguish three different regimes. A low gericity or large velocity regime in which most of the energy passes through a medium directive regime where most of the energy is deviated to the right and a high gericity or low velocity regime where most of the energy is reflected back and this is called barrier regime. We see three simulations for this. Low gericity regime. Most of the wave is transmitted straight. Highly directive regime. Most of the energy is redirected to the right. Bam. And barrier regime, most of the energy is reflected back. So this act as a constraint. Okay? Then, uh, in Zoolander, there was uh, the character who was able only to turn right. We want also to turn left. So uh, it's very easy. It is sufficient to change sign uh, to the spinner. And in this case, uh, wave is redirected to the left. OK, so we have more possibilities. And now I'm going to conclude, if I have time. Uh, by trying to explain better the type of non-reciprocity that gives this system. There are different sources of non-reciprocity. So, in the, uh, again, we apply two forces in A and B uh, with different uh, mutual directions. Uh, and here we can see that uh, a first source of non-reciprocity is due to the fact that we have a tensile-only system. So if we apply two forces of different amplitude in A and B, the force applied in A generates a wave that uh, uh, goes to the left and it does not reach the point B. So the mutual work is zero. And uh, while the wave created by this force reaches the point A and gives this mutual work. Uh, this is similar to what is going to happen here. For this case, the two waves uh, propagate, fall apart, and the mutual work is zero. Then uh, there is a common uh, source of non-reciprocity due to the non-linear behavior. So if the amplitude of the two forces is different, uh, the mutual work are different because uh, the wave depends on the amplitude uh, of the propagating waves. Uh, this is classical in non-linear elasticity. If the two forces have the same amplitude, uh, we retrieve the same answer. But in addition, we have this highly reflective effect. Is the for, if the force is applied here, the wave propagated through and is deviated to the right and reaches the point B and C. If the force is applied in B, the waves propagate through and is deviated to the right, reaches only the point C. If the force is applied in C, it propagates, reaches the point A and is deviated to the right without reaching the point B. So if we look at the mutual work between force A and C, same amplitude, we retrieve reciprocity. But if we look at the mutual work between A and B, the force applied in B does not uh, create a wave that does not reach the point A. So we have this additional source of non-reciprocity, which is given by the redirection of the waves. With this, I conclude. And uh, if you have questions.